be in right West Virginia. We're at Norway Avenue Church of Christ, 1400 Norway Avenue. We love that all you guys come out and join us. If you're tuning in live, thanks everybody. Turn around and wave to everybody tuning in live. Say hey. All right. We got such a powerful message for you guys tonight. We're going to be talking about the battle within. Anybody, anybody battling yourself? Yeah. All three of you. Amen. All right. I'll preach to you three tonight. Yeah. So you guys know the first month of every month, we do what's called graduation, which, which for any program, it just so happens Lifehouse ends up holding theirs. But listen, we need you guys to know, I don't care what program you come from, if you guys don't do a formal setting graduation, we invite you and we would like you to do them right here at the movement. Amen? Amen. Right? And so all you got to do is get a hold of me and Daniel. Daniel right here. This, this is Daniel Purdue. He'll even print you a certificate and put your program's logo on it, and we can help you with that. So if you guys don't do a formal graduation, please get with us so we can help you do it, okay? And then we also do a celebration of time, and we're going to recognize periods of sobriety. Amen? Amen. So I want to give you guys, who's never been to a movement before? Raise your hand if you've never been to a movement before. Well, that's good, man. A lot of you guys are repeat customers. I heard, I heard that's pretty regular in addiction recovery. Okay. This anybody second or third time around? Is anybody a retrade in here? If you're in recovery, you know what I mean. <laughs> Nine times. <laughs> yeah, you got retrade? A couple times? All right. We're going to get it this time. All right, if I could have your guys' attention for just a minute. Let's do a quick little housekeeping that we're thankful that you guys come to the movement and you've made it. If you're here to visit somebody, we're thankful that you just made it and we're glad you're here to visit them. From this point in the service on, we're gonna ask though, if you could, please, 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 if you could, if you're here to visit somebody and you guys need to have a side conversation, please take it outside the doors to the hall or even outside, okay? Are we good with that? Is that okay? All right, because every week I get like 12 messages. Man, it was, it was great, but there was like 10 people around me talking, right? And so we just want to make sure nobody misses nothing, right? We good with that? All right. So, hey, who wants a T-shirt tonight? We do have the T-shirt gun in the house. We hope it don't blow up. It ain't going to blow up. They just broke it shooting potatoes with it. That's what I heard. Chad. He said, I didn't do it. <laughs> He's caught. <laughs> uh, I think we got it fixed, though. We're going to have a good time. So here's what I need you to do. I'll give away 15 T-shirts tonight. If, if any of you that do have one of these silly smartphones, don't worry about it. If you're in the farm or phase one or two, whatever, you don't have a phone yet, you're going to get your phone back soon. And by that time, you'll be tuning in from home somewhere. You won't be in this area again. But, so get your phone out, please. Go to the top of my Facebook, Rocky Meadows, and share this link. By the time I come back from baptizing 20 people, which we don't know if we have any baptisms yet, by the time we're done with graduation and celebration of time, if there are 50 shares, just 50, there's like 500 people here. If I can get 50 shares, I'll give away 15 t-shirts. How about that? So some of you might need to share 10 times. <laughs> All right. So before we begin, um, we usually have praise and worship every week. And every week we have a different praise and worship from a Christian rapper to a, a Christian rock group, which by the way, I want to tell you guys, this is really exciting. July 22nd, the movement will be at the river. And I've got three of the hottest top Christian rock bands out that's going to be here for July 22nd. We're doing just straight concert. I may do a short message then with an altar call, but we're having a concert, um, seventh, seventh time down, um, Silverside and Awakened will be here July 22nd. And these are big time, big time bands. As a matter of fact, we had Silverside here when they were on the top 10 Christian billboard rock um, a couple years ago. So, I mean, we got, we're, we're very blessed that we get high level quality of praise and worship. Speaking of which, a top level praise and worship next Monday right here, we will have renewal praise and worship in the house, huh? They're, 
they're some of our greatest friends and very talented, and we're excited to have them in the house. And uh, next week, they'll be right here. And a lot of them are, are Lifehouse graduates and people we've been in touch with for several years. But pa the pastor of this church has been a very good friend and helped me the whole way with Lifehouse. Aaron Smith, which you guys know that the movement don't happen without Aaron. See Aaron right there behind the soundboard? He is their lead tech of media and he helps make all that happen. So we're very thankful for the work they do and they'll be here in the house next week, amen? amen. All right, before we um, get started every week, we like to announce and make sure that nobody ever misses their opportunity to get water baptism, that we believe that if you believe that God's real and Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior has died for you, that your next step is water baptism. So let me ask you tonight, does anybody here believe God's real possibly? He's out there, God exists. Yeah. Like half of you didn't raise your hand. What's going on, man? I, I thought I was preaching. I'm going to preach repentance and come to Jesus tonight. I think I'm going to have to change my message. Um, so anybody that's in that group said you believe God's real, believe Jesus Christ came and lived here and died for you, was buried and raised again in three days. Anybody believe Jesus died for you? Yeah. Amen. So we believe if that's true for you, and you've never been water baptized or you were baptized previously and you've had a falling away and you're ready to say, I'm ready to make a decision and change my life, that we call this sealing the deal, that there is a very spiritual experience that happens at water baptism. And by the way, I believe it's your first real action step telling the world I'm serious about my father's business. As a matter of fact, the AA Big Book says this. I love it. It's step three. It says, having been... Not a sit and sit around life, right? It's action life. So we believe this is your first real action step saying, I'm serious about my daddy's business. I'm ready to change my life. I'm making a decision for Jesus tonight and I want nothing to do with addiction anymore. Amen? Amen. So is there anybody ready to be baptized tonight? You ready to go? We have towels. We have clothes. Come on up here, right over at this wall. Come on. Come on. Who else? Come on. We have all the clothes and towels and anything you need. Let's do it. Come on. Amen. Woohoo. I heard she's graduating. Amen. Yay. That's, that's so good, Mom. Okay. Are you guys ready? Yeah. All right. Daniel's going to come up. Daniel is like, listen, Lifehouse does not operate without my right hand. Daniel's been a right hand to me. He does so much, uh, and he's going to open up with our graduation. I give you Daniel. Give him a round of applause, guys. So we're going to start off uh, with our farm graduates tonight. Um, these guys uh, have been separated from the world for 60 days. Nothing but big book study, Bible study, meetings, uh, no cell phones, no girls. They've thoroughly got through the first five steps, built a solid foundation to continue their recovery. We've got our guy running the farm, uh, Sean Pressgraves, is going to come up and hand these certificates out. Everybody give him a round of applause. He's kind of a big deal. Good evening. Our first uh, farm graduate is Jeremy Jessup. This next guy's got a place in my heart, Josh Harrell. Come up here, man. Oh, this is one of my mentors. You couldn't ask for a more solid guy. Josh Pahalski, come up here. Josh Blainer. <laughs> Jason Oliver.
That's probably most. Ricky Huffman. Thank you, Sean. Amen. That's always a special time for me, seeing people change their lives. Um, up next for graduation, um, we have the, the Girls Life House. Uh, we've asked uh, Katrina to come up and hand out some certificates. Um, this first girl that we're here to recognize is Jennifer Legg. She's not with us tonight. She's at home with her kids and her family. We're so proud of you, Jennifer. We love you. <laughs> this next one holds a very, very special place in my heart. Her strength and her um, faith in God and her recovery is so super strong. And I I'm extremely proud of her, and it's an honor. Certificate is certificate. Thank you. remodel. back there. He's also lead detective on the Lifehouse Police Force. Scarberry. So we want to celebrate tonight more than just the Lifehouse graduations. We want to recognize everybody's period of sobriety. Um, if you've reached that 30-day mark, stand up if you've got 30 days sober. Give them a round of applause. That's the toughest month to get. The first one's the toughest one to get. Okay, if you've got two months, stand up. Two months, 60 days. We're at a couple over here. Got several over here. All right. How about 90 days? Three months of continuous sobriety. There we go. For Jacob. 
How about six months? Six months. There we go. There's a couple over here. We got some over here in the back. There's PJ. How about a year of continuous sobriety? Where are you guys at? There we go. About a year and a half, 18 months, 18 months. There we go. Two years. There we go. All right. Three years. Four, we got some people with four. There we go. Is that a booth? How about five? There we go, there's Mandy. Six to ten, anybody got six to ten years? Stand up if you do. About 11 to 15. 15. 16 to 20. It's Pastor Garrett, Aaron Smith in the back. All right. We've got over 20 years of continuous sobriety. Stand up. I don't think Jim's here tonight. The most important of all, who has today? You guys, you guys kind of missed it, but there's Jimmy J. He's got 29 years. All right, man. Who wants a T-shirt? Chad, Rex. All right, we got some T-shirts. Here's, this is the T-shirt team. Oh. Huh? Is he here? Yeah, call it. And we got one guy. I, I messed up a little bit when I was printing the certificates because he's already moved out to reunite with his family, his kids and stuff. Um, but we want to recognize Shane, Shane Walker tonight. Walker's in the house. So apparently they shot too many potatoes out of my t-shirt gun. <laughs> Chad. Chad Coleman shot too many potatoes out of my t-shirt gun and broke it. But he did fix it the first time, so we'll, we'll expect him to fix it again. <laughs> Chad. We're going to hold Chad accountable, guys. There's Chad. All right. Are you guys having a good time yet? I don't know, man. When I was getting sober, we didn't have anything like this. <laughs> All right, are you guys ready? Okay, if I could, let's, let's go back to that. Remember, we're thankful you're here. 
Hey, Aaron, we want to turn them down maybe? Is that? Yeah. Jeremiah's got them. Okay, let's do this again. If you're here and you came to visit somebody, remember, you need to take it outside those doors or outside, right? From this moment forward, we're going to pay attention. We're going to read the word of God. I believe I have a powerful message to help transform your life tonight, right? We don't want to just come here to have a good time. We do have a good time. If it had been just for that, it would have been fun. But we want to make sure we go away from this place changed, right? That God had touched our lives. The spirit of God is here. And we need what he has for our lives. Amen? Amen. This is my buddy. I got to give him a hug, man. What's up? Glad you're here. He needs some extra love right now. All right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening and we give you thanks and praise, Lord God, that tonight we come boldly before the throne of grace, that we know that your spirit is already here in this place, that, Lord God, you live inside of every believer, and most people here tonight already are, that if anyone isn't, that tonight their heart and their mind is open and receptive to you and your truth, Lord God, that we would come to believe. And for everyone here that's already a believer that, Lord God, tonight we want your word because you declared and said it would not come back void, that we must have it planted inside of us and go away from this place changed, healed, delivered, set free from addiction. I pray that tonight that you would use me, I would be fully out of the way, that my heart is of you, my mind is of you, my vocal cords are of you. We just thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all said, Amen. Amen. So um, this is a common theme of a message we speak about a lot, but I believe I'm going to twist around on a little bit tonight and bring piece, lots of pieces of everything I've used before. The topic of tonight's message is the battle within, right? That I, I truly believe this is that you, you've got three real battles. We, we live in a fallen world. Everybody understands that, right? That this nature in this world is just not really conducive for us to do well. That it's a fallen nature, fallen world when Adam and Eve... Messed it up in the beginning. God set us out to do it on our own. And it said, told Adam, he said, you would till the ground by the sweat of your brow. Told the woman, you would have a hard labor. Like, so it, it's not blessed like it was we were supposed to be in the Garden of Eden. That is a, what's called a fallen natured world. Everybody gets that, correct? Right? And then we also deal with the enemy, which is Satan. And any spiritual forces, anything antichrist, anything against Christ or the, against the word of God, that the, is a battle for us, Right? Then the third thing that we battle is ourself. This dirty thing called the flesh, this old nasty skin suit that I'm wearing. I have some desires, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life that the Word of God tells us about is just really our biggest battle, in my opinion, right? It, I know it says we don't fight against flesh and blood, but against powers of darkness and wickedness in high places. And I know that's all real. But I truly believe, especially you guys trying to beat addiction, you're your biggest battle. And anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody know? You feel like you're, you're fighting yourself at all times, right? It's like, man, I try to do good and I don't do the good I say I'm going to do. You know what I'm talking about, right? Like, I swear I'm going to do better. I'm going to double my efforts. And you find yourself doing that silly stuff over and over, right? And so I want to use a lot of scripture and really kind of teach if I can tonight, not so much as preach as I usually do. I want to teach a little bit and get some scripture inside of you so you understand you can beat this thing. That if you've got the spirit of God inside you and by being a believer in Jesus Christ, you do. If you don't understand that, let me tell you tonight, when I talk to you and say, hey, do you believe Jesus died for you? And you go, yeah, that's me, right? Listen, the very second you did that, whenever it was, God sent the spirit, his spirit to live inside of you. And it commingles with your spirit. You're now quickened. You've become alive. And so you have a power plant living inside of you that can help you live a life you can't live without it. But we're so silly and we live off of our emotions and what I feel and what I want. And I do some bad stuff. And, and I found out that along my path that I kept trying to beat alcoholism and I kept trying to beat addiction myself and I just couldn't get it because I was trying to do it. And I finally had to realize it wasn't really all about me. It was about me recognizing the spirit inside of me and having faith that he could do what I couldn't do. That he can do inside of you what you couldn't do. Yeah? 
And so I'm gonna walk through a series of scriptures and I hope I can unlock some thinking for you guys tonight, okay? Give me the first one. Galatians 2.20 says that I've been crucified with Christ, yet I live. Nevertheless, it's not I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. And I'm sorry I didn't read it the way it reads up there. I know the King James. When I quote scripture, it's King James Version. I can't help it. That's the way I learned it. There's a cadence, there's what's called a cadence to it, and it makes it easy to remember. And that's just what God ran me through. When I was in jail all them times, and, and he got me in his word for five hours a day, I read the King James Version, and it was very foreign to me, and, and thus saith the Lord. And, and then I found out, like, 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 he don't even talk like that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, like the language of God, I believe, I believe is going to be Hebrew. And, but, so that's what I learned. So I'm sorry I quoted it a little bit different, but you guys read it, and you get it, right? So you've been crucified with Christ, yet you live, but no longer it's I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. That's the point that you got to get. It's no longer you live in, that you literally got to count this version of yourself, the old addiction version of yourself as a dead human being. If you could understand that really you could say, I'm going to die to my old self, you would get that, right? But you got to get up and do it again tomorrow. That's the funny thing to this. Like, it's like, okay, I'm dead. And like you start living this Christian life and then you find this junk back in your life. You get to kill you again. You literally sometimes got to crucify yourself five times a day. No, do you get what I'm saying? Like, like it's, it's not like a one-time death that you wake up again tomorrow and crucify the old you again and live unto Christ, your new spiritual life, anew each time. That every time you find the old you popping its head back up, you go, uh-uh, no, 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 no. The old me is dead. I will not live that way any longer. Because here's the truth. You can resurrect the old you. Let that zombie version of you come back to life and smoke crack, shoot heroin, drink alcohol, fornicate, run around with Ray Ray and them. Like, 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 like the, the old version of you is very willing and wants to come back to life. Every day. Like that's really the battle, the battle within. And so I'm here to tell you tonight, you got to crucify the old you and live the new life with Christ, right? By the faith. By his faith. By whose faith? Not even by your faith, by his faith. By the faith of the Son of God, who's greater than all of us. And he lives inside of me, and he lives inside of you if you're a believer. Now listen, here, oh here, listen, let me devastate about 12 of you. If you don't believe Jesus died for you, you get to try to beat addiction all by yourself. I don't know about you, like I tried it like a bunch. I never could do it. I just finally come to the point, I said, I'm either gonna believe you, God, or I'll believe me. And I got tired of me. And I got to a point, I was like, I was on this cliff. And, and it's like, you know, because you're reading the Bible and there's some silly stuff in there. Like I'm reading the Bible, it's like a whale swallowed a man for three days and three nights and the guy's still alive and he spits him out on land. And it seems like it contradicts itself a lot. Man, you can be saved. No, you can lose your salvation. And there's, there seems to be all these contradictions and these outlandish stories and it's like, no way all that stuff can be real. And that's what my mind wanted to tell me. But I got to this cliff and I'm, I, I just finally had to say, here's the way it's going to work. I'm either jumping off this cliff and I'm going to believe you, God, and everything you say and everything in your word, or I'm going to keep living with what I say and do and what I believe. And I got tired of me and I finally just jumped. And it's been the greatest journey of my life to have faith in God the way that he wrecks you. Listen, by the way, if you receive this tonight and we do an altar call and you come to Jesus, listen, God's getting ready to wreck your life, man. I mean, he is going to wreck your life in such a good way. You'll have a life you could have never had because now God's in your life and it's by the power of God and it's not just you. And that's what we all need it, right? Amen. All right, give me the next scripture. So he says this in 2 Corinthians, therefore, if anyone be in Christ, and if you're a believer in Christ, you're in Christ. If you believe Jesus died for you, you're in Christ. Christ is in you. Does everybody understand that? So therefore, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. There we go again. That oxymoron stuff, old things, new things. Now, listen, you got to live out the new you. There is a responsibility 
on your life to renew your mind, believe what God says about you instead of what you feel, hear, see, taste, touch, and go through. Because listen, listen, you'll go through some stuff and your humanity wants you to do da-da-da, whatever da-da-da is, right? You know, we all have da-da-das, right? Da-da-da, right? So you go through some stuff and, and your feelings want to cause you to do some things you shouldn't do. And you, that's where you have got to get the word. By the way, that's my word. That's my Bible. I got like 50 Bibles in here. See that? 50 Bibles. Right? New digital world. I still like a book though, man. I'm old school, man. I love reading my Bible out of a book. And like I highlight and I mark it. And I tell you, it's top left hand on this side. You know, like I know where stuff is in my book, right? But so anyway, you got to get in the word of God so you know who you are. So you know who he is. Because when, when you get away from the word, you start forgetting. And, and what's right here in front of you and what you go through seems more real than the life that he has for you. And we've got to get away from that. Like you, you've got to get this word inside of you. That's what will change you. The word is the spiritual food I know in this realm that changes you. Prayer and the word of God. Nothing will so much change you as that. I love the programs, the steps, man, absolutely. Them steps take you on a journey and you get a spiritual life you could have never had. I'm telling you, you get the word of God inside you, you go to the next level. I'm not, I'm, I'm not kidding you. Like you'll get sober through the steps. The spirit of God comes alive inside you, man. You have a great life. You get the word of God inside you. Oh, it's a whole nother level, right? And I'm, I'm encouraging you guys tonight. You're going to have to get in this word. It's not enough to just get sober and try to live a life. It's one of the biggest battles I'm seeing and having is like you get people sober like for a while, like a year, right? And they're doing well, they're good, they're con what we call connected, right? You got to get connected here, right? This connection here is what makes it possible. And then I'd live here, right? And so they're connected. And then they get away from this realm of influence that we have of daily church, daily meetings, all the good things of their life. And then they, it's like the old nature shows back up. And they think like the old nature won't take back over. I'm telling you, it's a default and it's coming back. Like, it, like you don't even have to make a decision again. A decision is made for you. If you don't keep renewing your mind and stay connected, it's, it's coming. Like it, it's just like it happened to me 28 months ago, me and Jimmy. Jimmy was like, you're going to have to get sober again. I was drunk, <laughs> right? Seven years sober. I'm drunk again, right? Will's over my house on Christmas night. And I'm like, I'm, and I'm preaching every Monday. Well, my last time I preached right here, there was 35 people at the altar giving their life to Christ and I'm drunk that weekend. Because if you don't renew your mind and don't stay connected, it's coming, baby. I'm telling you now. Don't even ask what happened. I'm telling you, you already know. You've got to stay connected here. And that word of God will keep you alive in such a way spiritually, you'll overcome anything in your life. Amen? Amen. Give me the next scripture. It says for, oh, I love this. God, oh, this is so good. It says for, this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. What's his commandments? Well, if you ask 98% of Christians, no one can name the 10. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm not kidding, right? 98% of Christians can't name the Ten Commandments. The good news is you don't have to live by them any longer, guys. He just wants you to do two. He said, love God first and foremost with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And he says that Jesus said it. He said the second one's a lot like that, guys. He said, go and love your neighbors. You love yourself. That's the commandment, guys. Now, Jesus did fix us a little bit later, and I talked about this a couple weeks ago. He said, a new commandment I do give you. And I always wonder why he said that, because like the two is the, the thing, right? Those two, he said, on these two, the two I just taught you, he said, hangs all the law and all the prophets. So any law I've asked you to follow, anything the prophet said, anything the word says, hangs on them too. Them two commandments I told you is it, guys. But Jesus later on says, a new commandment I give you. And he said, go and love your neighbor as I had loved you. And I've questioned that and questioned that. I'm like, why in the world did he do that? And then I thought about it. Because we don't usually love ourselves really good sometimes. And so I won't go love others the way that I should sometimes. So he gave us the real example. He said, go love them as I have loved you because Jesus does it right, baby. Amen. 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 He said, for this is the love of God that you keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. They're not burdensome, guys. To love God first and love other people is not a burden. If you see it as a burden, something's wrong with you and maybe you might want to check yourself because these commandments are not hard. They're not burdensome, right? If you try to follow the 10 commandments, it'd be burdensome. And they turned them 10 into 613 back in the day. And then now there's like millions, right? 
That's burdensome. The law is a burden. The law was set up to be a burden. The law was set up to show you you couldn't follow it. The law, the law is perfect and holy. It just can't make you holy. It's going to show you you're a sinner, which was what it was created to do. To show you're a sinner so you would need something greater, and that is Jesus Christ. Amen? For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Remember, I told you the world was a problem, but you're now born of God if you believe Jesus died for you. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Without faith, nothing takes place and happens. It's by your faith you believe Jesus died for you. It's by your faith that you access his grace. It's by your faith that anything takes place. Now, God can do what he wants to do. Just so happens our faith activates his grace. It's your faith that causes things to happen. It was by faith that Abraham was counted as righteousness. Before Jesus ever came and died, Abraham believed God. He said it was counted to him as righteousness by his faith. It's by faith, guys. Amen? Amen. Who is the one who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the son of God. That's how we get into the kingdom of God. That's how we get reborn. That's how your sins are forgiven. None of that takes place without believing Jesus died for you. By believing Jesus died for you, everything is possible. Without that part, you're trying to access God. Uh, good luck, right? Hey, one day you're going to stand in front of him going, hey, here I am, God. I'd love to talk to you about all my stuff. And you get to pay for it. And I don't know about you, but I couldn't pay the debt. And I realized Jesus paid it for me and I've never been so thankful to understand that Jesus died for my mess. Now that he's saved you, are you going to come out of your mess? No, some of you are saved believers trying to still play around with your mess. Want to know why your life's whack. I'm telling you now. Quit playing around with sin and messing your life so you can have the life you said you wanted. Because the stuff that you're doing ain't really what you want. You're seeking something and it's not fulfilling. It's filling you a little bit, but it's not fulfilling you. You get God, it'll fill you and fulfill you. It's time to quit playing around with your mess, guys. How much sin can I play with and still be okay? How much self can I activate in my life and still be okay? Right? No, we had a topic today, came up, steroids, right? Early sobriety, a lot of guys want to start feeling better, right? Hit a little juice. I'm not saying it, it's mind and mood altering. I'm not calling it a relapse. I do know this. It'll activate so much self in your life. Through your ego, I'm bigger, I'm stronger. Look, all, you know, you're kicking it for the girls, right? You get your gear game just right. You know, get your hair parted right here. Look like you're the manager at a halfway house. Right? <laughs> you know the look, Right? You activate so much self, there's no way for you to come undone. You want to know why you're still sick? I'm just telling you, you're trying, to play, you're trying to activate too much self, flesh, and you think it's not going to mess you up. All right? Now, if anybody feels like I was talking to you, maybe it was. But I, I wasn't talking about nobody specific. It was just a topic that came up today at lunch, okay? And, and that was my opinion. One of my lead guys said, man, he said, I'm not sure it ain't a mind and mood altering substance. I said, I don't think it is, except for the fact that I think it alters your mood of yourself, of that ego. You activate too much ego, and I don't know how much self you can inject into your life and stay sober, right? It'll cause you to disconnect yourself from God, right? Not that God will ever disconnect himself from you, but Colossians 1.21 says that we make ourselves enemies in our own mind. Amen. You activate too much self, you come undone, right? That's just one thing, or dating and early sobriety, sleeping around. These are all issues that I think we activate too much self. Does anybody know what I'm saying by calling, using the term called activating self, right? I, I can either activate God or I can activate self, right? Here, let me do this. So I, I, I do this a lot. It's a teaching I used to do all the time, like once a month. I'm going to do this tonight. Come here, Trent. Come here, Josh. Yeah, come here. Yeah, here. You see how he did me? Just because you're taller than me. Come here. Okay. Let me show you guys this, right? So there are three parts to, to us, right? There is the body, this flesh suit that we live in. And the, the Bible talks about and says the body's no good. I'm sorry. You're no good, bro. Like, what it is. Not literally. Right. No, you're amazing. You're going to be yeah. good and you're going to get it this time. Right. I really believe that. But tonight, you're the flesh and you're no good, okay? Okay. All right. There's no good. 
no good, right? Girls, <laughs> I know he'll be Snapchatting you later, so I already know, right? Like, he's going to hit you up, right? Yeah. See what I mean? Told you, no good. Okay, so the flesh, right? This is what we call self. No good, no good, man. The flesh wants all those things, man. It wants to sleep around. It loves alcohol and drugs because they make us feel different. And that's why we use alcohol and drugs anyway, isn't it, right? Because we love the feeling that it produces. This thing loves all that, right? Self, image, anything that's self. That's this guy. No good, no good, right? I'm going to just, for the sake of this conversation, I'm going to play the inner part of a being, which is called your soul. I made an acronym for it called WIFE because I'm a guy, right? Will, intellect, feelings, and emotions, right? Character, feeler, thinker, chooser, that's this guy. This guy is the spirit of God. If, if you're a reborn, saved, again, saved Christian, this is the spirit of God. This guy is perfect, holy, righteous, and ready to stand before the throne of God right now. He can never be no more perfect than he is. This is the spirit of God living inside of you. And here's the problem. I'm the soul. And the thing you can tell of how what you'll produce in your life, whether sin shows up in your life or whether Christ, the Spirit of God, shows up in your life is this. All I am is a reflector. Whichever one you give me, if I have self and being inject self into me, I'm going to reflect sin into my life. Today, as a saved, born-again believer, if I have self reflecting my soul, my soul, what's going to show up in my life is sin. I'm going to sleep around. I'm going to drink. I'll smoke crack and shoot heroin. Matter of fact, I believe tonight if I've relapsed, I'm capable of robbing Speedway tomorrow without a mask. I mean that, right? Only church I've ever been to, the pastor gets to talk like that, right? Like, it's so good. Like, so, so this guy, if, if, I feed, if I feed this guy's flesh, sin will show up in my life, right? If I'll feed my soul the spirit, which is the word of God, praying, connection with God, talking with God, loving and helping others, if, if I do that, Christ shows up in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Christ will show up in my life based on what I give this guy. Your inner man, the soul, which is your feeler and your character, your thinker, your feeler, your chooser. This guy controls so much. But you control this guy by what you put here and what you will have this guy see in your life is what gets activated. Sin in my life, sin to the soul, I feed it sin, it's going to show up in my life. If I feed my soul the word of God, praying, connection with God, connection with other people, loving other people, Christ shows up in my life. You can tell who you are by what you're feeding yourself. Amen? Give these guys a round of applause. There's an old wise tale for you guys to believe me. You ever heard the two wolves story? Many people here have. Right? If you've never heard it, it goes like this. There's an old Indian chief and two of the young, young kids were they just getting the worst god-awful battle you have ever seen. And the one finally gets a big branch. And I mean, he's about to do the other kid. And I mean, he's got that thing reared back. And he's going to smash the other kid right over the head with it. And the chief grabs the stick and he says, wait a minute, son. And he says, come on, I got to talk to you. And he says, but great chief, great chief, I just can't help it. He makes me so mad and I'm jealous. And he said, son, the truth is you have two wolves that live inside of you. One wolf has love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, and temperance, which is self-control. And he said the other wolf has murder, strife, envy, jealousy, and is no good. And he says, great chief, great chief, which wolf wins? And he said, the one you feed, son. And so it is with you. Whatever you feed... Whatever you feed this guy is what's going to show up in your life. And so I ask you tonight, what are you feeding yourself? What are you allowing in? Amen. It's time to change, guys. Right? Give me that next scripture, Joe. 
He said, and you were dead in trespasses and sins. Let's run through this fast because I want to get to the next one. It says, in which you formerly walked according to the course of, somebody say, this world. We used to walk according to this world. No good, no goods, wasn't we? Like, I've been arrested 38 times. I spent 11 years in prison. I walked according to the course of this world. I was a no good, no good. Does you, anybody know what I mean tonight? If you've never been a drug addict or never been to prison, you, you can understand what I mean still. At the root of the problem, we're all the same no good. Right? Frank talked about it. Frank's never did a drug in his life. He said, the only difference between me and you is Christ in my life. That's it. If he hadn't met Christ when he was 13, he'd have been me or dead by now. Right? Probably wouldn't never live this long, right? And, and so we walked according to the course of this world, and that's what we want to get away from. Amen? Amen? According to the prince of the power of this air, which is, you know, the no good, no good devil, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. We were sons of disobedience. Until Christ, until you accepted Christ in your life, you were a son of disobedience. Or daughter, by the way. Okay? Where it says sons, it means you ladies too. It wasn't just talking about us fellas. You're in this bunch too, right? Among them, we too all formerly lived in the lust of the flesh. Remember I told you? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life for our issues, including the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath even as the rest. But God, being rich in his mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. Remember, I told you tonight, the old you is dead and you're made alive new with Jesus Christ. The very second you believe that, God now sees you as alive. Before that, God's looking down on you and going, one day you're gonna face me and you're gonna get to pay for all your stuff. And so I'm asking you tonight, will you believe that Christ died for you so you can be forgiven? Will you believe that Christ died for you so you can have a brand new life? We're nothing without him, Amen. By grace, you have been saved and raised up with him and seated with him in heavenly places. Now, that's the funny thing, because I always talk about these like oxymorons. Listen, you are already seated in heavenly places with Christ. You are already seated in heavenly places with Christ. The question is, will you live it out? I know it don't make sense to some of you. Not yet. But I'm telling you, you got to live like you're already seated there. You're still here and you're left to live this life out. But you're already seated in heavenly places with Christ if you believe Jesus died for you. Now, I need you to start living like it. No, that's real. Yes. You got to capture that tonight. That's, this, this is one of the things I was talking about. I need you guys to grasp tonight. Instead of you struggling on this here, this earth, like it's always just, oh, the struggle is real. I'm like, you had to walk two blocks to buy a pack of Newports and a Monster. How, like, like, like the struggle, What? And you had the money to do it. The struggle's real. Stop it. Right? And raised us up with him and seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Go. And so that in the ages to come, he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Go. And for by you have been saved through faith. Somebody say, I've been saved by faith. Saved by Not of yourself. It is a gift of God. Not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. You don't get to do nothing to say you earned any of this. Because the truth is you didn't earn any of it, but God loved you so much right in the middle of your mess, he sent Jesus to die for you. Yeah. For... For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. That's what you need to do. Back up, back up, Joe. Listen. For we are his workmanship. We are created by him and for him. Stop thinking this is all about you. We were created by him and we were created for him. By his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Listen, if good stuff ain't coming out of you, you got to check yourself and say, wait a minute, good stuff's supposed to be in, getting produced for me like a fruit inspector, right? Is good fruit coming out or is that dirt ball stuff still coming out, right? So I'm telling you, you were created in Christ Jesus for good works. Start questioning your life and what's showing up because if it's not showing, if, it, if you could check yourself and do, do some fruit inspection, right? 
Number 13 said, no good, right? Let's throw that one out, right? So you're gonna have to start checking yourself and say, wait a minute, I'm gonna have to cut some of this out of my life. I've gotta cut some people out of my life. I had to cut young Jeezy out of my life, right? I'm not kidding. There's a rapper out, man, called Young Jeezy, the snowman. He still deals coke. Like, he's the greatest rapper of all times. Not Tupac, not Biggie. It was Jeezy, okay? So the joke about that is this, though. I really believe this, right? So I make the joke. I really believe if I listen to that rap, trap, trap rap music, right? He talks about dealing, slang, and all that. Man, it's so good, right? In your flesh, right? And so if I listen to that for one straight week, I'd be swearing I could go flip a kilo of cocaine, which is called a bird, right? I'd be swearing I could flip a bird. But the truth is I'd only go buy a quarter ounce and in five days I'd be at the worst motel across town trying to fist fight somebody for the last push. Right? But if I listened to him for one week, my mind would tell me I could get back in the game like I was ever a slinger anyway. I was holed up peeping out the window, see ya. I'm, I'm going to do my thing this weekend, right? No, I never did it. I was a drug addict, right? And, but, but if I listened to that mess for one week, it would have me plumb messed up. So every time I've got him, I'll turn the radio on. I got Sirius XM in my truck. And I'll cl click on channel 47 every now and then. Jeezy comes up, you know, and I take a screenshot and I send it to Will or somebody. And they're like, only six days left, right? <laughs> <laughs> but so you were created for good works though. Right? And what's going to matter if you do good works or bad works is what you'll let into your life to determine if you're feeding your spirit man or if you're feeding your flesh. Listen, this, this, this message for me was game changer. Like I've heard several different people teach and preach on it in different ways. But this message I'm giving you tonight changed me as much or more than anything I ever heard. I mean it. Go ahead, go to the next one. And so therefore, remember that formerly you the Gentiles of the flesh. You guys are Gentiles, by the way. Back in the old, old days, the Israelites were the called chosen people of God. We were the people who were not getting in. Thanks be to God, they were so disobedient, we got grafted in. I'm thankful. I'm like, man, I'm sure glad they didn't do it right. Right? Because if they had did it right, we wasn't getting in, guys. Right? God knew, though. But and so formerly the Gentiles of the flesh who are called the uncircumcision by the so-called circumcision, which means the Jews were circumcised, they did it right, we were the ones who didn't, which is performed in the flesh by human hands. Go. Remember that you were at the time separate from Christ. Do you guys remember the day when y'all used to be separated from Christ? Woo! Excluded from the commonwealth of Israel, which is the people of God, and strangers to the covenants of the promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Go. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who formerly were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. His blood was shed, so your blood don't have to be shed. Right? Jesus' blood was shed, so yours don't have to be shed. You can either receive his blood shed for you, or you'll get to shed your own. I don't want to pay the debt. Right? I mean, it was, really, it was a real easy choice for me. Didn't take much of altar call when I heard that kind of stuff, right? Like, you either accept Christ died for you or you get to die for you. I, I, I'm with Jesus, thank you, right? I mean, what, what are you going to say, right? For he himself is our peace who made both groups into one. I told you both. We're in, baby. We're in. And broke down the barrier of the dividing wall by abolishing in his flesh the enmity. See, God had something against us. God had something against me and you. No, it's, it's real. Like we had mess in our life and we were all gonna pay for it. God, God had something against us. He looked down and until you believe Jesus died for you and he looks down and says, hope you're dead. He looks down and sees you as dead. Even though you're alive, he sees you as dead. But the very second, the very minute you believe Jesus died for you, you are quickened and made alive and God looks down and goes, my daughter, hope. Right? That's the way this works. It's that easy. This is the almost too good to be true good news. Right? Isn't that great? And he said, which is the law, commandments, contained in ordinances. Oh, God, wait a minute. i got to back up because this hit me today. Listen. By abolishing in his flesh the enmity, listen, which is the law of commandments contained in ordinances. He abolished the law. He fulfilled it because you couldn't fulfill it. It was set up, first of all, pass. 
get by and show we could do it. And the truth is, it was there to show us we couldn't do it. And Jesus fulfilled it for us. Quit trying to fulfill it. Quit trying to live by the law. Quit trying to do right because you can't do right. Just believe God to change you and you'll do right. No, no, it's the silliest thing. Like instead of me trying to do right, I don't try to do right anymore. I just believe Jesus, read the word, pray. He changes me internally and I just do good. I don't try to do good anymore. When you try to do good, that's you and that's your fleshly stuff. As a matter of fact, he said, your best works look like filthy rags to me, God said. Jesus said, apart from me, you could do no good works, but connected to me, you would do all good things. So it's about you just having faith of him inside of you doing those things. Amen? Amen. Doesn't that help? Like when you flip the perspective, like you don't have to try to do good no more. All I got to do is believe God. No, it, it's so, it sounds so silly. Like you don't have to try to be sober no more. Just believe God. You believe God, it'll, it, you'll do good that causes you to be sober, right? Instead of you trying to do it, just believe God and you'll do it. It just takes the pressure off. Instead of it being me, it's him. Look, if he can say the same power that saved me is the same power that will keep me sober today. I just got to believe him so I'll do the things I'm supposed to do instead of me trying to do them. Does that make sense? Doesn't, doesn't that help? Like, like what? I don't have to do good? No. You believe him, you'll do good. Matter of fact, you'll do more good than you ever imagined, but you'll be so graced and empowered to do it, it won't be like you doing it. You'll do 10 times more than you ever would have done on your own because he's powering you to do it. Amen? Amen. All right. So that in himself might make the two into one new man, thus establishing peace. See, you had no peace because it was always you disconnected from God. Back up, Joe. But he now makes you two into one because the new man now lives inside of you, became alive. The spirit of God inside of you with you is now one. And that brings peace. There's no peace without Jesus, guys. And I, all I know is some of you tonight need some peace, don't you? Yeah, I know. Go, next one, Joe. I think it's 17. And might reconcile them both in one body to God through the cross by it having put to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. Listen, I don't know where you're at tonight, but I'm telling you, there's so many of you, it's time to quit playing with your life, right? Bow your heads with me if you would. Heavenly Father, I just pray tonight that every man and woman that's never come to know Christ as their Savior tonight, Saturday night, Lord God, there's a whole second group that tonight, Lord God, that I, I know just isn't the, living the way they know they should, that it's time for them to have faith in you to live the life that they could have. I ask you tonight, if there's any man or woman here that says, I've never confessed that Jesus died for me and has saved me, and I want to make sure I'm saved tonight, tonight is your night. I just ask tonight on the count of three, if that's you, all across this place. I just want you to slip your hand up and say, that's me tonight and I want to make sure I'm saved. That it, Maybe some of you had questions. I didn't know if I was saved. That tonight we're going we're gonna to solidify that. We're going to make that real. Tonight, if you've never believed Jesus died for you and you're ready to make sure that if you died tonight, you would be with God. You're ready to beat your addiction. Raise your hand all across this place. Get your hands way up. Come on, I see you all across this place. There's a whole second group right now you know you're just not living the life you should live, that you've been playing around with what I've called tonight flesh. You've been playing around with too much self. And it's time that you shed away those things that's keeping you from walking the life and walk that God has for you all across this place. Raise your hand. Say, I'm ready to change my life tonight. I'm ready to give my life up tonight. If you're part of either group, get up out of your seats. Come down here and kneel at this altar. This is where we get real with God. It's not to embarrass you. Jesus said, if you'll confess me before men, I'll confess you before my father. If you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my father. And tonight, this is where we're going to get real with God. Get up out of your seats all across this place. Come down here and let's change our lives tonight. Tonight, let's get real with God tonight. There's so many of you tonight just says, look, there's something I got to let go of. Get down here and let's pray about it. Let's change our lives all across this place tonight. It's time to get real. No more playing around. 
No more recovery games. No more church nights tonight, you get real. Father, you that tonight, Heavenly Father, we believe Jesus died for us, that his blood was shed so our blood don't have to be shed, that tonight the Spirit of God would rise up inside of every person around this altar in these seats tonight, Lord God, that tonight we choose you. Tonight we know that you chose us and we must have you. We choose your way and your will for us. Tonight as a group of believers, we denounce alcohol and drugs from our life. We denounce the self-will from our life that tonight you would keep us and protect us. It's by your hand, not by us. We believe you, God. We have faith that you can complete it in us. It was never about us. It's about what you're doing in us and to us and through us. We choose you tonight, Heavenly Father. We so thank you, Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father. I did this. I did this. I did this. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord God. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. That's right. Amen. How many of you guys know tonight God was in this house? As you leave out of here, be blessed and know that God is doing in you what you could never do by yourself. Amen. We'll see you next Monday. Love you so much, man.